Welcome to the Elevating Funeral Service podcast. If you want to run a successful funeral home, cemetery, or pet cremation service, you don't have to be the one that has the lowest price. You do need to be the one that offers the most value, provides the best customer experience, and clearly communicates that in your marketing. On this weekly podcast, Ellery and Welton will show easy ways to demonstrate value to families and create differentiation that helps you stand out from the competition. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Elevating Funeral Service. I'm your host, Ellery Bowker. I'm with my good friend and co-host, Welton Hong. This is the podcast where we teach funeral homes and cemeteries how to add more value for the families they serve and how to create a better customer experience. We have a special guest with us today. We have Craig Meehan with ASD, and we're going to be talking about texting families. And in particular is, should a funeral home use texting uh, as a way to communicate with their families? Uh, It's going to be a great episode. I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. Um, It's just a really good subject. And I think a lot of funeral homes are going to get a lot out of this. So guys, how are you doing? Awesome. Good, good. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Doing great. Doing great. So, Craig, why don't we do this here? Um, um, everyone knows ASD. Okay. If you don't know ASD, you're not in the funeral business. But tell us who you are and kind of what your role is at ASD and kind of how you got into the business and kind of give us a Cliff Notes version. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for, for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, my name is Craig Meehan. I'm the National Sales Manager for ASD Answering Service. Uh, we're a funeral exclusive answering service, and we serve about 40% of the, the funeral homes across the United States and Canada. Um, I've been in the business five years. Um, I was a vice president of sales for, for a manufacturing company. I learned about this company, and it's just been such a pleasure um, to be part of the, this team here and, and do stuff like this and, and try to teach people about, you know, um, giving better service to, to their clientele. That's awesome, Craig. Thanks again for for joining us on this. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to dive in uh, to the question at hand here, which basically is, should a funeral home use texting to communicate with their family? So right off the bat, what I'd like to do is just kind of get all of our thoughts uh, generally as to what we think, uh, so we should be texting, we shouldn't be texting. So Welton, let me start with you. Should a funeral home be texting a family? Uh, Yes, no, and why? Definitely yes. (laughs) Okay. So, um, dealing with funeral home clients or funeral director clients, we text them all the time. And from my point of view, it's much more simpler than calling them. And me, myself, which is getting more weird and weird throughout the years, I'm more loving when people text me rather than even call me, call my cell phone. If somebody calls my cell phone, like, oh, how dare you call my cell phone? But if somebody texts me, I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'll text you back. Because I'm in between things, in between meetings all the time. It seems a lot less intrusive than a phone call. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and, and I definitely resonate with that. You know, I mean, too, when, when, when people call me, you know, like if somebody calls Weird. me, I think, yeah, yeah, like that must be important. Yeah. You know, why wouldn't they text Weird. me? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. as I think more about this, it's so weird. Throughout the years, I used to talk to people on the phone all the time. But texting seems more the standard these days in a communication point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Craig, what are your thoughts? Should a funeral home be texting a family? Yes, no, and why? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Whenever I, I, I answer questions like this, I, I try to think of, you know, myself as a consumer and, right. and how I would um, want to be treated. And I know I, I shared this story earlier, you know, um, I have a son with autism and um, he goes through several therapists a, a, a week. And um, when, when he's changed therapists, um, I'll be in the meetings and um, a couple of therapists would text me uh, after his, his services and, um, they would, you know, celebrate the successes and, and, and tell us, you know, what they did that day. And uh, for me, that's how I relate to, you know, kind of a, a funeral director, because it's a, a it's a vulnerable position that you're in. It's a it's a family member that you care so much mm-hmm. about. And, you know, I might not have the experience, you know, as these funeral directors, I, I'm trusting someone else with with my loved one. So. Absolutely. To me, it's first class service. It's not impersonal. It's, you know, getting to the point and and showing the person that you care. Right. 
That's a really, really uh, important point you 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 made about um, about you know putting yourself in the customer's shoes. You know, like would you would you want that? So it's it's interesting. Um, when I grew up, I grew up in the '70s and '80s, and um, I kind of equate this to going to visit somebody, right? And, 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 and I'll bring this full circle, but where I grew up, people never called anybody. Like you just go to their house, <laughs> you knock on their door. Sometimes you didn't even knock. You just went in, you didn't ask if they were busy. You didn't ask if they had somewhere to be. You just went, you showed up for this visit. Um, and people used to call the same way. Well, now even like my brother, for example, like I wouldn't, I won't just call my brother. I'll text him and say, are you busy? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like texting, like if I'm calling somebody, I feel like I need to ask them, Hey, do you have a few minutes you can talk? Right. Like, I don't want to be presumptuous and say, I know that if Craig answers that mm-hmm. phone, that he's got 20 minutes to talk to me, you right. know, that right. I, yeah. So I think the opposite of it being impersonal, I think it's definitely personal because it's showing that you care about my time. Yeah. Right. That's um, for permission. Yeah. First. To your point about the caregivers, I love that idea because what I do all the time is I try to look at other industries, Craig, um, in parallel industries of the funeral business to try to extract ideas from what others are doing and try to bring them into the funeral business. And one of the industries that I look at all the time is the senior care market. Sure. Okay, so the senior housing, senior care, software, all the kind of you know, the same stuff we do here, right? Um, uh, they do there, right? It's just, you know. They've died here and they haven't died there, right? Um, and I'm not trying to be comical, but it's just, it's kind of the same market. Well, one thing there's a lot of caregivers doing now. So let's say that you're in Florida, right? And your parents live in Pennsylvania um, and you have somebody coming in to care for your parents. You know what they're doing a lot now? They're texting, yeah. right? They're saying, hey, you know, tell Craig, we said, hey, hey, Craig, I'm with your mom today. You know what I mean? We did this, we did this. So similar to, with your son, uh, yeah. with his therapist, they're doing that with older people. Um, there's another uh, website. Um, it's called Dog Vacay. I don't know if you guys know that website at all. It's where you can have, um, it's like Airbnb, but for, for dog sitters, mm-hmm. right? So like if you're going out of town, you can take your dog over to this person's house and yeah. your dog kind of camps out at this person's house. So instead of going to a vet for a weekend, it's going to live with a family, right? Mm-hmm. And Families are now texting on that platform, right? Pictures of your dog or your right. cat or whoever. You know, so it's just, it's just, in, it's, it's very intimate. So yeah, I, I love that. I love that whole story about your son's therapist. Um, what I wanted to do, because I always like to look at data, I want to share with you guys something um, from a survey that I saw. So let me see if I can share my screen here. Uh, hang on. So you guys can see the screen now. Yes. Uh, for those of you that are that are listening to this, what I'm showing them is I'm showing them some survey results from a company called ZDNet. They did last year, and what they did was they surveyed a little over 600 respondents, I believe, or that's how many respondents they had. Uh, and they asked one question: Was do you wish businesses would use texting to communicate with you? And it's very interesting to look at this data because the baby boomers, um, 64% of baby boomers, right, our target market in the funeral business, 64% of them said they prefer businesses to text them for the same reasons that Craig and Welton and I have just shared. I think they're exactly the same way. Um, now, I think we have to make the assumption that everyone has a phone that can text, right? right. And if they don't, Texting doesn't mean anything to him anyway. Um, every baby boomer out there that I've ever met or know have a smartphone in their hand, and they're all texting people anyway. So this makes perfect sense that they would want businesses to text with them. Um, so 64% of baby boomers, Gen Xers, which I'm on the tail end of that. I'm not a boomer. I may look like one, but I'm not. Uh, I'm 50, uh, so I'm, I'm a Gen Xer. It's a 76% of my generation uh, would rather text. Um, I truthfully don't know who the other 24% is, Welton. <laughs> like everybody I know would prefer this. Yeah. Um, Gen Y, which I guess would be the millennials now, uh, 82% of those uh, would, would prefer texting. And then Gen Z, my daughter is 18. Um, it says 83% of those. I think that's a lie. I think it's 100%. Yeah, me too. Like, I, I do think not know much higher. any teenager. <laughs> like oh, I, yeah. look at, I look at my cell phone bill yeah. and I look at my daughter's number. And yeah. it's like, you know, text messages are, are well, they use Snapchat and, and, and that more than anything. But you know how many phone calls are on there? Oh, yeah. Like four. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like to me, you know, like that's the only people, you know, her, me and me and my wife are the only ones she ever calls. Uh, but I thought this was interesting because this shows from the consumer side. And this was just one survey. There was tons of these surveys out there that all showed similar data. But this was interesting to me because it clearly shows that there's an appetite uh, right. for consumers to use texting, right? And then I think the other thing is to think about how you would use it as a funeral homeowner 
or a funeral director, how would you how you would use it? Would you rather somebody text you? If the answer to that is yes, then you can assume your families would want oh, yeah. the same thing as well. Um, so what I want to do now, and this will get kind of fun, I want to show you now. So keep the ZDNet survey in your mind, what consumers want, and I'm going to show you what can, what funeral homes think. And I'm going to set the stage here with a survey that we did two years ago where uh, we have a texting product with our company, and this isn't a pitch for that, but the survey that we did, I think it will, will shed some light on what funeral homes think. So what we did was we um, – we did a survey and we asked a little over 700 customers uh, a series of questions about texting in general. And basically we said, what do you think of texting in general? You know, how do you want to text a family? What would you want to text them? You know, et cetera. And we got back 110 responses um, and it was, it was very clear cut. Here's what happened. There were, and I think I may have shared this with you before Welton, but there was three groups and they were very, uh, it was literally like a third, a third, and a third. Uh, the first third said they loved the idea, right? And mm -hmm. that third, um, for the most part, was already texting families. That was what they said was, we love it. We're already doing it. Um, a third of them um, quite literally told me I was partnering with the devil. Um, <laughs> and, and that texting was ruining funeral service. And it's totally impersonal. Um, and then the final third uh, were ones that were a bit more open-minded. They thought it was a neat idea, but they're, they were just kind of concerned a little bit about it. But they knew that it was probably the way to go. What I wanted to do was I wanted to share with you some of the comments that I got um, from some from funeral home directors. So uh, the first one, and I just pulled out a sampling of these. So one said, "How?" and for those of you that are listening, this says in all caps, how impersonal with 100 exclamation points, right? So this person <laughs> emphatically thinks it's a dumb idea. Um, another one says not a good idea at all, again, with 100 exclamation points. Um, this one says, I personally think it's nice in theory but I consider texting to be impersonal. I extracted this one because the key um, uh, word in here is I. <laughs> like, I think it's impersonal. Interesting. Like, never mind what your consumer thinks, you mm -hmm. think it's impersonal, okay? Right. Um, uh, this one says, I think it's cheesy. <laughs> and I actually corrected him. He said Chesy, he misspelled it, but I, I fixed it. <laughs> he said he thinks it's cheesy, or she, I don't know who it was actually. They think it's cheesy. Um, another one that hates it, they said it feels impersonal, makes us sound a little uncaring that we couldn't call them. Mm -hmm. This is interesting to me because if you've ever tried to call somebody, you know that most people don't even answer their phone. Yeah. Right. Um, so this one, it's their opinion. Totally respect that. But I think it's unfounded a little bit, um, in my opinion. Um, do you guys feel the same way? You feel like Definitely. It's, okay. Yeah, I, I, Absolutely. Um, so then I, I didn't, I didn't show you any of the ones that said they love it. We'll just know that they love it and they're already doing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, this is the interesting group here. This is the group that I would call the, the final third, which were the group that we're not sure. Mm -hmm. This one said younger people would get it. Older people might think it's intrusive and not personal. I think this is in direct contrast to what that survey from ZDNet showed. Right. Right. Because 64% of the uh, baby boomers, right, far more than the majority, far more than half, um, said that they would rather that. So, again, right. this is the presumptuous uh, attitude of the funeral director, not, you know, actual data, because the data shows something differently. Um, this one said it is not appropriate for every family, but would be effective for some. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's probably true. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in today's digital age, it may certainly have a place to open up additional conversations, but I am not yet sure it would be appropriate for all families. How to differentiate would be the question. I think this is interesting because how to differentiate is the goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, this one, I kind of like the idea, but I also feel it is somewhat impersonal considering what we do. I think this statement right here, and this is one of the reasons why I brought this one out, was I think that if you look at any innovation block of every funeral homeowner or director out there, this is the heart of it, right? They think it's impersonal considering mm -hmm. what we do. So as business owners, we look, if you're not in the funeral business, you generally are going to look at the, at the, um, at the effectiveness of what you're going to try to do and say, okay, is this going to work or is this not? Right. Funeral home owners and those in the funeral business, uh, rightfully so, but they apply a filter to this, right? Is this personal for the funeral business, right? Should we be doing this because we're, we're talking about death or this is a death care, you know, business versus some other business. Um, and I think that maybe we apply that filter too much, Right. And, and because we do, we right. miss opportunities to serve that customer, Craig, like you were explaining, in a way that's empathetic, in the way that you want. But maybe as the funeral homeowner, we apply that filter and we don't really look at, at your point of view. 
Oh, yeah. okay? I think I think we see that all the time. Um, not a f another one said not a fan of that kind of contact, but I'm willing to try it. I think that's great. That's an open mind. So I, I just wanted to share that with you guys because and, and with the audience because I think it 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 shows the. I think it shows two things. One is that it shows that there are funeral directors that are never going to change their mind, right? They believe they know what's best for their consumers. They believe they know what consumers want. Um, maybe it's founded, maybe it's not, but that's what they believe. Um, there are some that are already forward thinking enough to be doing it. And then there are some that probably know they should be doing it and they will probably get there. Um, what do you guys think about that data right there? Is it surprising or not surprising to you? Yeah, Ellery, that was done a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, and the I, survey we did was, was over yeah, two years ago. Because I keep on going back and thinking about myself two years ago. I would be in that middle <laughs> part as well. But yeah. now I'm totally, two years later, I'm texting a lot more than I used to. So yeah. Yeah. I would say yeah, the data will be a little bit more lopsided towards those who do think yeah, text is, is uh, definitely personal for them. Yeah. What do you think of that, Craig? Is that uh, uh, surprising, not surprising? Um, not too surprising. I think sometimes you have to give people an idea, you know, of, of how are they going to use this? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not saying on, on, on a first call to, to text mm -hmm. someone, but, you know, on a pricing call um, for maybe, you know, you know, you hang up the phone, you don't know if you've got that business, shoot them a text just to, you know, put your prices in their hands or say, if you need anything, let me know, you know, um, or afterwards, um, you know, that the family can text you a, a photo for the opit instead of emailing. Um, yeah. It's it's really convenience. And uh, I think Absolutely. sometimes we just have to um, teach people or explain how it can be used because um, we're not just, you know, texting families, you know, on a first call. No. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, it's interesting. I called a customer. This has been about two weeks ago now. And the customer was not there. And I said, hey, can I get his cell phone number? And the lady said, we're not allowed to give that out. <laughs> and I thought, boy, that sounds like 1990s, doesn't it? You know, mm -hmm. like, I, I don't mind if somebody calls here, you know, and wants my cell phone number, have at it. I'd rather them text me mm -hmm. than call me. Mm -hmm. you know, because that way I can see, okay, interested, not interested, et cetera. I mean, like you're going to get me more if you text me than if you call me, because if I don't have your contact in my phone, I'm not answering it. No. I mean, I, I, I get suckered sometimes because they'll spoof the phone numbers and the area code and it'll make me think it's someone local and I'll call it up and it's the same guy trying to sell me a car warranty for a car I haven't owned in 15 years. You know, that guy, you've probably heard from him. Um, so texting to me is a filter right? It lets me filter all that stuff out. I don't have to think about it anymore. So as a consumer, I love it for that reason. I wanted to, I wanted to mention one thing, Welton. So Welton and I, uh, Craig did a podcast episode. It was one of our early ones where we talked about basically uh, the idea was should or uh, should they not put funeral pricing online? Mm -hmm. right? So should a funeral home post their prices online? And what we looked at was we looked at do consumers want it? And I think uh, without a doubt, we showed and we demonstrated that consumers do want it. And mm -hmm. then we said, here's the funeral homes that don't do it. And the Delta was huge, right? So if every funeral home or every customer wanted it, the majority of them anyway, and very few funeral home customers were providing that information online, then there's a big disconnect in there, right? right? Um, and I think the same thing applies to the texting right now. You know, if we can, if we, based upon, you know, the study I showed you um, uh, on the consumer side from ZDNet and then other similar ones that I researched, I think overwhelmingly the majority is customers would much rather you text them than not. Right. And so if we, if we, if we believe that to be true, and then also we believe my survey or our survey to be true, that a lot of phenomes don't want to do it because they have their own block about it. Then again, just like with pricing, you have this disconnect, you know, uh, and the consumer loses out because it's the funeral home kind of blocking it. Right. right. So, um, what I wanted to do, one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on here, Craig is, um, um, and just for, for those of you listening, uh, uh, ASD has created, uh, uh, it's a texting product called Mobile FH Texting, um, and this isn't a podcast about that product, but what I wanted Craig to do was to come on here and talk about um, how ASD kind of thought about texting, right, and how ASD um, was early in, in the idea that families want to text and funeral homes want to text families, and if they do, then, then a tool would make that uh, uh, helpful. What I wanted Craig to do was to share just some data, if you would, Craig, about 
you know, funeral homes that are using it, how many are using it, how often they're using it. Is it, it what's the efficacy, right? Is it being used? Do, I mean, are people, are they finding value in it? Um, and interestingly, do you think, uh, this may be anecdotal, but do you have some funeral homes that maybe fell into my uh, final third camp that didn't know if they wanted it, if no, if it was a good idea, but then found out that it's an amazing tool and they couldn't live without it? Yeah, absolutely. So One thing I want to some of this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Just before I get into the data, there's a real easy way to uh, see if a family wants to text and, and you just ask them, you know, what is your preferred manner of, exactly. of, of communication? Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Just ask. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, ASD mobile, uh, the mobile FH texting came from the mobile FH, which is our feature where you can mask your phone number and, and call a family back. And it's so um, convenient and, and popular for a couple of reasons. A, you can keep your, your own cell phone number private. Um, uh, B, all those calls are, are recorded um, so we can use them for training and, and, and management reasons. Um, so the mobile FH texting came from, from that where uh, a client asked us, as, as most of our, our new products and tools come out, it's, it's from our clients requesting them to say, hey, could you... Um, do this for a text can can a family text the uh, funeral home phone number and come through your app and we can communicate that way um so that's how it came about um so we right now we do have about 1400 clients actively using mobile fh um there have been 3100 31,872 unique conversations with families you know so new families that you know, are, are engaging. And then 136,000 volleys between the funeral director and the families. So if you do the math and, and 15% of those are, are the one-time use of, you know, let me text you a, a, an obit or can you text me the, the a photo for the obit? Um, so it, it equal, equals out to about, you know, seven texts per family. Um, so the families are engaging with, with this um, and, and they do prefer I wouldn't say prefer, but they definitely don't mind being um, contacted this way, especially if they engage it, if they start out that way. I love that. I mean, it just really go back to, you know, one of the one of the uh, the things that Welton and I wanted to do on this podcast was to talk about how to add value, right? Like, right. like if you don't want to compete on price, you have to add more value. You have to act like a, a company that has the consumer's best interest at heart. And everything is driven by empathy. And so I love that you keep coming back to how I would want to use it as a consumer, how I would want to use it. I, I do everything by text messaging. I may have told you this uh, offline, but I bought my last car over text message, literally. <laughs> I bought a brand new car over text message. I never <laughs> talked to a human being until I pulled in there to get the paperwork done. Mm -hmm. That was it. He walked around, uh, did a video, sent it to me. I walked around my car, did a video, sent it to him. He made me an offer. I texted back, no. And he made me another offer. I texted back, no. He kept doing it until he got to a price I wanted. Then finally I said, yeah, I'm on my way. <laughs> it was the best experience I've ever had <laughs> buying a car. Uh, so I, I think that, again, if we, if we just take the whole funeral home filter off of it, the one that we apply to everything, right. you know, that we do saying, can we do this because we're a funeral home? I think if you remove that, I think that you're going to find the consumers, you're, as a funeral home owner, you're more worried about it than that consumer is, yeah. you know. So I, I appreciate that. Um, I want to share one more screen. Uh, you know what? I don't need to share the screen. But what I want to do is I want to make one more key point, and then we're going to get into how a funeral home can text families and kind of why. Um, the, the last point I want to make is that I think there are four things um, that you, well, I'll, I'll tell you four, but I think that it's important to note that texting right now, while may it seem impersonal, is not always going to be impersonal because I can, sh I can share with you guys um, some things that, you know, just a few short years ago were considered impersonal, right? And now it's everyday thing. It's not a big deal at all. Yeah. Um, the first one, quite appropriately, is answering services, right? Um, and you know a little something about that. I can, I, I know that 20 years ago, you know, if you used an answering service, people would be like, you're not a real funeral director. You know, if yeah. you don't live above the funeral home, if you don't answer your own phone, you know, can you imagine a stranger answering your phone? Right. Now it's perfectly normal, right? You guys do an amazing job. You and the other services, you guys do an amazing job. You let funeral directors have lives outside the funeral home right? They don't have to live above the funeral home. And quite frankly, it didn't turn out to be impersonal because consumers don't care. You know, mm -hmm. largely consumers don't care. What they want is someone compassionate on the other end of that phone, 
right? Somebody that can guide them, somebody that can help them, somebody can, you know, just tell them what to do next. It doesn't have to be somebody living above the funeral home, but that was considered impersonal. And you, you would agree sure. with that, I'm sure. Absolutely. Um, uh, I started in the funeral business in 2005, building funeral home websites. Believe it or not, we had guest books and funeral directors thought that the guest books were impersonal. I'm not kidding you. I can remember vividly some funeral home owners telling me, you can't leave a condolence on a website. That's impersonal. If you don't have enough, uh, if you don't have enough energy to go write them a card and mail it to them, you don't really mean it. Yeah. Okay. Um, another one would be flower sales on websites. People yeah. say you can't sell flowers on a website. You're, you are, you are monetizing that obituary. You know, you're taking, you know what I mean? But yeah. you know what? That somebody, somebody finally, luckily said, you know what? That family will get more flowers if you put that link on that funeral home website, right? If you put that link on that obituary, more flowers happen. Now funeral homes can share in that profit. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Now it's perfectly normal, right? <laughs> Another one, and quite appropriately is because it's in the news every day now, is webcasting. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, people said webcasting. You can't put your mama on the internet. You know, you, like that was, that was the approach. But now webcasting seems perfectly normal, right? And it's an absolute solution for a huge problem we have right now in that a lot of funeral homes can't gather. So I absolutely think that it's, uh, um, um, I think it's important to realize that even though texting now may seem impersonal, right? Even for the most hardcore funeral homeowner who does not, you know, he's on the dirt road to the information highway, that one, you know, I think that even for them, a few years from now, texting is going to seem just like an everyday thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you guys agree with that? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So what I thought we might do is we might get into to now what we can do is we can talk about three ways that funeral homes can use texting um, with their with their families. I think this can be broken down into three. One would be sales. One would be in service of that family. Mm -hmm. uh, and then one would be in aftercare. Um, so let's jump into the sales side. So in sales, you really have two types of sales, right? There's going to be a pre-need sale or an at-need sale. I'll talk about pre-need in a minute, but Welton, you are, your business is, is directly in the driver's seat of at-need calls, right? right? So talk to us about how texting can be used or is being used to help you win more at-need business, uh, for that shopper. Yeah. So on the at-need side specifically, um, Google already made it pretty easy a couple of years ago. So if you run Google ads, you can also have the message extension turn on. So families, when they saw your ad, they can actually text you through the ad. That's assuming obviously you have a cell phone that can uh, receive text. Lately, your Google My Business listing, your Google listing, every funeral home has a Google listing on there. People can actually you can turn on your cell phone on there as well. You're messaging there. Families can actually message you directly through a listing as well. So again, the world is evolving that uh, you got to make sure that if you're, you're potentially losing calls, if you're not enabling, uh, enabling to uh, receive text messages. And of course, on your website, ideally on your website, besides your phone number, you can also say text us as well, right? So I think those are just good applications on the at -E side. You've got to have multi-channel way for people to be able to communicate with you. Standard on websites, typically a form and a phone call. Texting is a great avenue these days. Well, I think on that point, you're going to cover your bases, right? Yeah. So let's say you have a form or an email, a phone number, and texting. Mm -hmm. If Craig says he, he feels more comfortable calling somebody, well, that's an option, right? If I feel more comfortable texting somebody and you don't have it on there, you've removed my option, yeah. right? We're so again, chat, it's just, right? All these yeah. are just other avenues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and frankly, um, you know, consumers want to be able to get their answers, their questions answered before they want to call you, right? Uh, that's why they do yeah. the research, that's why they do everything. So mm -hmm. if I can text you, I guess my feeling on the ad need side, Welton, is that um, one, you know, nothing begets uh, uh, more questions than an at need funeral if you've never done this before, oh, yeah. right? So I'm all over your website, I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, text us? So if I see there's, for me, this is just me, if I see I can send an email, to mm -hmm. office at ABC Funeral Home. I have no confidence that's going to get to anywhere. Right. A form feels like a black hole. Right. Um, phone number, I don't really want to call you because no, I don't want to really. be pressured. I don't want, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, texting? Hmm. Yeah. I like that because one, 
I do it every day. Two, it's easy. Three, I feel like I'm going to get an immediate response because that's what texting is to me. Like I feel confident that if I, if I'm texting somebody, somebody's going to see that. Right. Yeah. And then, and, and I'll tell you one thing. I think the, the the funeral home that does the better job of communicating with that family that's on the fence, that undecided family, they're going to give themselves the best chance of winning that call. Okay. So you could even be a higher price, right? And if you give that customer the easiest way to communicate with you, right? And you clarify your message, I think you're going to have a better chance than somebody who may even be lower than you, even if that family is looking for the lowest price. You could win because you make it smoother and make it easier. Okay. Yeah. Craig, what are your thoughts about texting on the at side? What do you guys see at ASD? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of our, I, I like to talk about uh, the pricing calls, the at pricing calls. Um, you know, the, 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 the prospect or the, the, the grieving family doesn't give you an answer right there on the phone. Hey, you know, can I just text you, you know, what we just spoke about? Mm-hmm. Um, and that way they have it in front of them because we see all the time that, you know, with pricing people that haven't done this before, they're calling that two, three times, oh, I forgot to this, or uh, I forgot to ask this. If you can text them, say just your price or or something that you already have made up, and that's in front of them when they're calling, say, two or three other funeral homes, you're going to stand out, and you're going to answer their questions. It gives you a, you can upsell. Um, There's there's so much benefit to, to being in front of that family Hey, and if they have a question, they can text you right back instead. And they just feel more comfortable. They just feel more comfortable with you. Yeah. I just love it because it's a direct line of communication. Right. Like we had a, we had a situation on Saturday where we actually screwed up for a customer. We dropped the ball about something. Um, uh, I don't want to admit it on air, but it was bad. We just, we dropped the ball. Uh, I called that customer back. And uh, after I apologized profusely about what we messed up on, I said, Hey, can I give you my cell phone number? Mm. You know? And this guy said, Oh my gosh, this guy's, he owns a company. He's giving me a cell phone number. That guy texted me twice today. One time was to thank me for fixing the problem. You know, now how confident do you think he was now that he had my cell phone number? You know what I mean? Like he knew his problem was going to get resolved. Um, So for me, it feels intimate. It feels very, you know, immediate. um, So I love it. All right. Let's move on to the pre-need side. I think that, um, and I'm just going to lay this out, but I'm probably going to get hate mail. (laughs) But I think that a lot of funeral homes um, don't do, uh, I think, well, let me say it this way, um, so I don't get hate mail. I think a lot of funeral homes are missing a, a lot of opportunity mm-hmm. from the pre-need side because they don't give ways for customers to contact them about pre-need other than through the regular phone number, you know, that they have. Uh, again, kind of thinking about it, you know, with empathy, if I'm the consumer and I've never planned something before, right, and maybe a death has occurred or something's got me triggered and now I'm thinking about my own mortality or my parents or whatever and I'm on your website and I've got questions and Mm -hmm. let's say just for an example that my father was a veteran, right, and I want to know, you know, what is this DD-214 thing? I don't know anything about that, right? And there's a big button that says text us your question. Oh, you know what I mean? What says DD-214, right? What is this? Uh, And then somebody responds. Well, now you now have an open line of communication with somebody that is not just perusing on a funeral home website. They're there for a reason, you know? And then if the funeral home, um, if the funeral home will will follow up, so let's say that you answer that question, and then a couple days later, you're like, hey, thanks again for your question the other day. Do you have any more questions? You know what I mean? And you're just keeping that line of communication open. To me, it's a huge missed opportunity uh, if you don't do that. Um, right. Also, um, you know, you could then reply back and say, hey, you know, can I send you a guide about what to look for when you're planning a funeral, right? And you, you, you continue to market through content that you're handing that family that you can send. If you can send it through an email, you can send it through a text message. Okay. Yeah. So, well, what are your thoughts on the pre-need side? Do you see many of your customers doing anything with texting on pre-need? They, I see some smart ones. They actually use video text. It just seems a lot more. Oh my gosh. I hadn't even thought about that. You're absolutely right. You do it with me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> hey, expl- explain that. Explain that. So instead of just typing it, I have fat fingers, so I hate typing. <laughs> so instead of typing, I typically just shoot just with my camera, just my cell phone, hit record, and then just talk on the camera, right? And then hit send. And video texting just seems a lot more personable than text. And then um, our clients, my friends, they, they got used to video texting me back. It's like, oh, wow, I haven't seen Ellery for a while. And that just seems 
a lot more personable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's awesome. I remember I asked you a question one time yeah. and were text and then you sent me back this video mm-hmm. and it was you. Uh, um, I think you're out on your back deck or something and you're like, Hey, Hillary, you know, and you just responded to me. Uh, over t- I forgot about that. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, Craig, what are your thoughts I just on wanted to, to, to mention on, on the pre need side? That's not a, it's such a common occurrence too. So you're, you're, you're sitting there and say you're, you're in hospice or in a hospital with, with, with a loved one. And, and you don't want to make that call right then, yeah, you're you know, bedside. Maybe you're, you're busy, you right. know, and to, to have something, I mean, you, you've got to think like the consumer that that was the perfect opportunity just to, they can text and then, and then again, that opens up the, the line of communication oh, yeah. because they, they can't call right then. Um, and, and, and we see it all the time. What a great example. I mean, I lost my brother in February and I remember, you know, being at his bedside, texting my wife and texting my brothers and sisters. And I'm telling them, I was the only one there at the time, but I remember telling them his condition. You know, like, mm-hmm. here's what's going on. And even though he was probably, he probably couldn't hear me. Yeah, I like to think that he could, you know, and I was doing it because I didn't want him hearing me sure. sharing the news right in front of him to my brothers and sisters. That's mm-hmm. a really great application of, of, of what you're talking about on the pre-need side. Yeah, absolutely. And again, think like a consumer. We, we can't stress that point enough. Uh, all right. So the second way um, um, that you can use texting to communicate with families, I think, is in service of the family. Okay, so you now got the family, you're serving that family. Um, I'll share one idea that I had. And then you guys can kind of elaborate on that and throw in some ideas. If I owned a funeral home, I'm just imagining myself here, I'm not a funeral director, I don't own a funeral home. But if I did, and a family came in, um, to me, if I was in the arrangement room, and there's five family members around this table, I think I would say, hey, can I create a group text with all of you right here? You know, yep. can I get your cell phone numbers? Can I create a group text? Because here's what I'd like to do. We're going to be together for the next two and a half days, right? Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of questions that I'm probably going to have for you. You may have a lot of questions for me. I'd right. like to keep you apprised of everything going on, right? As we honor your loved one, as we go through these next two days. And I can do that very easily and very efficiently through text message. Would you guys be okay with that? My guess is most of them are going to say yes. Definitely. Okay. And they may say, well, mom doesn't text. Well, that's okay. The rest of you do. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what I would do, and this is again, me just thinking through this through. And then what I would do is after they left my funeral home, okay. After they made the arrangements and left my funeral, maybe an hour later, I'd send them all a text message. And I would say, thank you so much for choosing us, for letting us help you. Here's my promise to you. Yada, yada, yada. right? Right. And then what I would do is I would then give updates to that family with text message, right? I would say, you know, uh, we've got your father ready for viewing, right? We, you know, da 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 da, right? And, or any questions that you may have, right? You can, that's good for the easy questions. But I think aside from the obvious getting questions answered, I think it's a way that you can show value by adding updates. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So like, you can just say, here's what's going on. I, I think about this back in 2000. Um, this was, yeah, 2000. My, my wife's grandfather passed away. And I remember the day of the funeral, the funeral home calling her grandmother's house, and I'm re- answering the phone, and the funeral home was saying, hey, we just want to let you know that the cars just left the funeral home. They'll be to your house in about 10 minutes, right? Wow. And I thought, we could do that over text message now, right? You could send it to that group and say, hey, look, the cars are on the way. Or, you know, you're just now leaving the funeral home. Hey, when you guys get to the cemetery, you know, we're going to have somebody there for you. It's just updates. So I would use it for group texting as updates. Well, you're shaking your head, nodding it. What do you think about that idea? Yeah, definitely. I love it. You just stay on top of everything, um, letting the families know so they're not worried at all. Yeah. They're not worried. You're carrying them across their journey. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah you're just guiding them. I mean, and, and how, how's it going to hurt? It's yeah. going to hurt anything. To your point, Craig, you asked them. They said yes, right? Mm-hmm. I think that you have a lot of people saying thank you. Thank you for that update. Thank you so much, you know? And then the other thing, too, to your point about the little things that need to be answered, Craig, I mean, let's say that I'm working on, on something and, you know, I need to know what year your father graduated from high school, you know? And you can ask the group, hey, what, what year did, uh, you know, Mr. Meehan graduate from high school? Boom, they got the answer. Don't need to email anybody. Don't need to call anybody. And there's five people on the text message. Somebody's going to fire back that answer, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, Absolutely. love it. Yeah, love it, love it. Um, you um, you mentioned something I thought was pretty interesting, Craig. Um, 
that when somebody's calling now, and I know I'm sure a lot of your calls you guys get are, you know, when is Betty's service, right? Or when is the visitation? When are the calling hours for Mrs. Jones? You guys are doing what now? Are you guys texting that information to a family? Yeah, absolutely. When it, whenever someone calls and, and, and is looking for service information, uh, we have partnered with all the website providers and uh, through our funeral sync technology and where we will text the, the caller that information. Um, and it just, you know, it, it boosts the, the unique visitors to the funeral home website, um, gives them opportunity to, to, to market themselves, you know, because, you know, maybe they're not going to the service. Maybe they're just calling to see, you know, how they'll um, when, when can I send flowers? And, and now when they're on their website, it's, they're in your store, you know, they could go to this place and, and, or, or maybe they'll end up, oh, wow, this is really nice. You know, what is the process for, for getting some pre-needs? Um, you know, it, it, all those unique visitors to your website, that, that is your storefront. That is, you know, your virtual when, when they're not actually in the funeral home. So it just gives you so much marketability there. Yeah, I love it. Um, you know, when I was in the website business, um, on every obituary, we would have a button that said, text me the address uh, on the service info. And so you'd have the obituary, then here's where the visitation is, the, the you know, the funeral service, the internment. Um, uh, we put that on there, and I didn't really think it was going to use that much. <laughs> people wore that button out yeah <laughs> even if they knew even if they knew where it was they still did it because it made it easy because they had right. it they could click that button it opened up maps and the gps and it just took them right there so i love the idea though when people call in uh, of texting them that so that's that's a really really great idea um the other thing too and i guess this is not on the family side um but you know certainly if the three of us are funeral directors working the funeral home we could have group texts with us talking about, you know, serving that family. I'm sure people are already doing that in the funeral home, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and this is the kind of the greatest compliment that that we've got is that um, when, after we launched, we said this, we, we're getting a lot of feedback from funeral directors that it's a great team collaboration. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's handling the family service is off that weekend. You know, every time the family texts the funeral home phone number, everybody can see what's going on. Yeah. So, you know, that funeral director, even though he's off, can still feel comfortable that someone's taking care of the family, that this stuff is getting taken care of. Um, so that that that's a benefit there just to keep everybody in the loop of. what. Yeah, you know, um, I just had I just had kind of a funny thought. Uh, so let's say that you're in a funeral home arrangement room and the funeral director is thinking this family doesn't want to, that, that, that he shouldn't be texting that family. How many times do you think the families are in a, in a funeral arrangement conference texting each other? <laughs> and the funeral writer is not part of that conversation, right? You think that happens? <laughs> I can guarantee you that happens, right? I can guarantee you that happens. <laughs> Uh, and then the last thing, uh, a last application, I think the funeral homes can use. So obviously in sales, pre need and at need, uh, in serving that family, uh, particular, oh, I forgot to ask you guys, do you guys have any other ideas on serving that family besides the group texting idea I had? I may have glossed over that. No. Okay. So we have uh, funeral directors that will actually, um, uh, during the services, they'll, they'll, or they're around the funeral home, they're placing signs up saying, if you need anything, text this phone number oh, great um, so idea. say if, if they're you're out of tissues or you know something in, in the bathroom um again it's just added value added service um and, and it's instantaneous instead yeah. of you know running around looking for the funeral director or, or calling when you're already in there so um that yeah, that's I love another it. way yeah yeah i love it um, the last, the last part, uh, or last thing that I had as far as for like how you could text the family or, or what application would be useful, uh, would be an aftercare. Um, mm -hmm. so you've already served that family, you know, texting them after the service, how are you doing? Is there anything you need, et cetera? Again, it's, it's just to me, some, some may say it's impersonal. Um, some not for me, I think it's very personal and I think it's just a way just to check in say, Hey, well, I don't want to bother you, but you know, is there anything you need? We're thinking about you today, et cetera, right? Um, you know, um, we've seen firsthand uh, families respond very affirmatively to that, right? Um, um, on occasion, you'll have somebody say, I don't want to get any support text messages, right? So fine, they're opted out. Um, but for the most part, families are definitely, you know, are, are, are affirming that based upon you know, their responses. What do you guys think about texting like uh, as an aftercare medium? 
Yeah, to me, it's it's nice that a uh, a funeral director actually texts me period periodically, just check in with me to see how things are going, and to see if there's any needs, things like that. So from my point of view, it's actually very very caring. Mm-hmm. It's like a friend texting me. It's not salesy or anything at all. They're just checking in on me. That's what friends do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, an application that we see a lot too is when they're using it for aftercare. Um, to let families know about like, hey, we're having a grief support group tomorrow, right? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, this or that, or, you know, we're having a holiday service event or just anything, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and there's lots of applications for it. But, but, but I think that if you, if, if you, and here's where I think funeral homes might get a little bit, uh, uh, they need to maybe really align their, their thoughts. Uh, because if you say, yeah, I think texting is a good idea for sales, right? And serving, but not aftercare, I don't think that family has a, I don't think that family sees a distinction. I think if they're okay texting before, right. Or during the service, I think they're going to be okay with getting a text afterwards, you know? So I don't think it, to me, again, if you, if you, if you can consciously remove that filter, you know, that we just by default apply uh, to every service that we offer families, you know, is this personal or is this not personal? uh, I think that you would find the application of this thing to be tremendously useful um, in, in a lot of different areas on that. So, um, so I, I mean, that pretty much wraps it up. You know, um, you know, my takeaway on this would be, you know, that texting adds value, you know, like to me, that's what it does. It, it adds value. Um, I think to your point, Craig, it shows empathy. You know, you're just saying, Hey, look, I mean, put yourself in that customer's shoes. You know, I think that your son's therapists understand that that mm-hmm. text, you know, helps you bond with them, right? It helps it's reassure well. you. Yeah helps reassure you that your son is in the hands of people that care about him. Right. Mm -hmm. And there isn't, they are as invested in his success as you are. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's just an easy medium, you know? Um, And frankly, uh, I think just in the, in the whole great big overview of kind of how we communicate now, texting is just efficient. You know, I don't want to get on the phone with somebody. I used to listen to my mom on the phone when I was a kid and she would say, (laughs) bye. And her sister would say, bye, bye, bye. But it'd take him 10 minutes to get off that phone. <laughs> like, oh, that's cut out with texting, you know? Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, well, do you have anything else you want to add at the end here? No, just try it out, right? And I love what Craig said is just ask the, the uh, families, what is their preferred method of communication? Yeah. And most and of I think that would be fine with text. Yeah, I think a lot of people you know, funeral directors will be surprised. You know, that's how, you know, for me, I I don't text with, uh, you know, anybody but my family and friends. So why wouldn't you want your funeral director to be considered, you know, that family or friend? It's just an extension um, because it's such a personal business. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, guys, thank you so much. Uh, This has been a great episode. This is one we've been wanting to get out for a while. Um, I think texting is just crazy important now and again i think it'll be fun to look back two years from now um and maybe even talk to people that thought today it was that i'm partnering with the devil um and see if they still feel that way a couple years now because i think it's just going to be as normal as email you know as normal as anything else if they give you their cell phone number you know they'll they'll be happy with you texting them um so that wraps us up um for those of you listening and watching we we certainly appreciate your time uh if you found value in this we would appreciate it if you would go on your favorite podcasting app and leave a review email a friend share this out um um, we really would love to hear your feedback. So if you want to email, it's Welton at ringringmarketing.com or Ellery at aftercare.com. We're pretty easy to find. Um, he's named Welton. I'm named Ellery and it's the funeral business. So there's not very many of us in the funeral business. We're, we're pretty easy to find. So we'd love to hear your feedback though. We'd love to know, um, have you found value in this? And if there's a topic that you would like us to cover, um, we'd be happy to hear that as well. So Again, thank you guys very much, Craig. Thank you for your time. Um, no, thank you know, you. tell Kevin and everyone at ASD we said hello, and we appreciate what you guys do for the business uh, as well. So, okay, thank you guys, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Okay, All right. take care. Take care.